at YouTube time itself here with more Kerbal Space Program. Last time when we left off, we were landing on Duna's moon, Ike. And a spectacular landing. Alright, now that we're here, let's do some science. So we log gravity and temperature data, transmit one set back, and record another set. And then, uh, well, I can't record temperature because Ike doesn't have an atmosphere, so there is no pressure. What else? We have the goo canister, the science junior, and then I think it's time for a little EVA, get an EVA report. Uh, we'll eventually get a surface sample, plant the flag, and all that good stuff, but we're going to grab the data out of the goo canister and science junior. I can't ditch these yet because it would unstabilize the craft, but we're going to get them now while it's nice and easy. What does it say about the surface? Dark black soil has an almost crystalline structure. It's fun to play with. And that just leaves us with a flag to plant before we head on towards Duna. And I guess the question is, where is Duna? Well, you can see it from here. It is up there. And because Ike is tidally locked to Duna, Duna will always be right up there above this flag. So, yeah, <laughs> so you can see Duna from here. Oh, and before we go, let's have a little more fun with this low gravity. Woo! <laughs> Uh oh. Alright, alright. Bill, you ready for this? Of course you're ready for this. Let's go! Yes, those are solar cells on the bottom of my spacecraft. <laughs> Prepared for every scenario. Not quite. Not quite. Oh, I'm losing altitude. <laughs> I think I'm going uphill. Oh, oh. Point the nose up. Point the nose up. Too worried about getting a super efficient launch. Uh-oh. Getting myself in trouble. <laughs> Will he make it over that hill? Probably. Okay. That's only 108 and a half meters per second to get to Duna from my current orbit. Uh, just as long as that's... Okay, I'm not going to run into Ike. That's fine. It's more efficient to burn towards the horizon rather than straight up, and so I got a little too greedy with trying to make an efficient launch into orbit around Ike, and I finally remember to pull back the landing gears uh, before I make the burn towards Duna. We get a nice shot of Duna Rise as we come around Ike here. A good chance to turn off the HUD and just admire the scenery. While I could have landed on Duna first, it makes more sense to land on Ike because thrust to weight ratio becomes a concern. If I have a lot of fuel with me still when I'm launching off of Duna, uh, that could get a little tricky. But landing on Ike first means I burn off some extra fuel and getting off of Duna later is easier. Last time we put our mapping satellite into a polar orbit around Duna. I think it's time to get back to that and see how it's been doing. The initial orbit that I put the mapping satellite into was just based on the optimal distance the satellite should be from the planet, but that distance determines the orbital period, and there was a bit of an issue with that particular orbital period. It turned out that for every day on Duna, or every rotation of Duna, the satellite orbited Duna five times. And because I rely on the planet to rotate below the satellite in order to map the entire thing, that meant that I only was mapping a small portion of it. Now, it wasn't quite exact, so I was, my orbit was progressing a little bit, and I was very slowly mapping the planet. And so I had to try and adjust my orbit to make things go a little faster. But I overshot that correction and started getting gaps in my map, so I had to tune it back. But eventually we mapped the entire planet, and I headed into the atmosphere for a landing. I end up burning all the fuel in those drop tanks, but I have to hold on to them until I land because they've got my additional science and goo on them that I want to run on Duna's surface. Okay, I think we're slaughtered enough. I'm going to land somewhere in here. We should be okay. okay. It's time to start using parachutes. First, I'll use my drogue chutes, and they'll deploy at a higher altitude, but they don't have the ability to slow me down quite as much as regular parachutes do, but I have just pegged the G-meter out at over 15 Gs when they first deployed there. It's scary to think of how many Gs I would pull if I just used main chutes. The parachutes would probably break, I expect. You can see Ike in the background. 
Yes, it is a beautiful sunset on Duna. At least I think it's a sunset, not a sunrise. Uh, with Ike in the background, we just float down slowly to the surface. It's time to deploy the main chutes. I've got three more main chutes here. Uh, the drop tanks are empty, so I shouldn't weigh too much. You know, hopefully things are going to go well. I'm going to be down 10, 11 meters per second just on the parachutes alone. I'm thinking things are great. I'm just going to enjoy this uh, this beautiful scenery, the wonderful colors here. The, the parachutes almost match the planet. Our green Kerbal Bill is going to look very out of place on this planet, but that's okay. We're doing science. Let's get some landing gears going here. And maybe the lights. Oh dear. What did I break? <laughs> what did I break it? Oh, I broke my engine? No! Oh, quick, hit that quick reload button. Whew, okay, that was a close one. We almost crashed into the planet there and lost an engine. Fortunately, we get to try it again. Yay for video games. On my second attempt, I'm much less careful about where I'm landing and end up in a strange place. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Wow. That's impressive. Um, now do I want to fire the drogue shoots? Not yet. Coming in in a dust storm, and it's going to be kind of hilly. There's a big drop-off over there. We'll see where I end up landing. I don't have a whole lot of control at this point. I think I better slow down. Yeah, going over 750 meters per second. Can't even see the ground, but definitely headed for it. Better slow down. <laughs> Passing through a dust storm. That's probably not a good thing. No, I do not expect that a dust storm is very good for my rocket flying straight into it at hundreds of meters per second. I, it's probably also not very good for parachutes either, but uh, we don't have a choice. We're gonna land, and uh, well, you want to use the parachutes or not? <laughs> that's that's all it really comes down to, isn't it? Okay, it's time for those parachutes. Yep, so once again, Drogue shoots first, slow us down a little bit, then the main shoots later, and then finally we'll use the engines this time and make sure we don't hit the ground very hard. Let's get those gears down. This is not where I wanted to land. <laughs> I don't have the SAS on. I'm going that angle because I'm going that fast. Alright, next set of shoots. I got fairly lucky. I'm headed for a fairly flat area. If I'd been just a little ways further over, I would definitely would have been on a slope and I might have flipped my flipped my spacecraft and that would have been bad. We still see the dust storm going on up above, but now we're going to fire up the engines so we don't risk hitting the ground too hard. It do bounce a little bit, but in the end it works out. Oh, oh. Stuck the landing. Yeah. Okay, so having arrived on Duna, it's time to uh, check things out. We can put our solar panels out. We can turn off the mapping. Save us some power. Log pressure data. The atmosphere is thin. Parachute do work, yes. Alright, and that just leaves us with a goo canister. Let's see what the goo does. Nothing exciting. And a science junior. Opening the sample container, you find that everything has turned red. Initial tests show that it will never wash out of white suits. You consider sending missions in pink EVA suits to reduce cleaning costs. That's a good idea. Bill, I think it's time to EVA. Our antenna sends all that wonderful science back to Kerbin. Our solar panels have a hard time keeping up, but they get there. Bill takes the opportunity to pose for the camera with the flag. He's very happy to be here. But it's almost time to head back to Kerbin, so grab the science, repack those parachutes, all five of them. I actually haven't repacked parachutes before, as far as I can remember, so it's kind of fun trying to wander around and figure out how far away I could repack them from. Turns out it's pretty far, which is quite useful. Anyway, with that out of the way... Alright, before we head off here, let's just take a look at where we did end up landing. Zoom in on the map there, and yeah, we... Uh, well, it could have been better, it could have been worse. Zoom in a couple times here, and see where we exactly where we ended up yeah there, there's a hilly area over there that's uh 
We didn't want to land there. It's a good thing we landed here. It's good enough. We can get ourselves off the surface and into orbit. So things start off going really well. But then my curiosity gets the better of me, and I decide, you know, I wonder what would happen if one of those parachutes was unpacked right now, and then proceed to do so. Oh, oh shoot, oh shoot. As you might expect, there's no real good way to control this. My only shot to recovery would be just to deploy all those chutes and land again. But, uh, well, that doesn't happen. No! Oh. Always remember to repack your parachute. And quick reload to the rescue. I forget a couple other things, though. Need to pull the solar panels in. I could break those off at high speed. And a ladder. Forgot to retract my ladder. When I reloaded after losing my engine on the first landing, I used a lot less fuel to land, and so my drop tanks with the Science Juniors and Goo Canisters attached to them still have some fuel left, and so that gives me a bit more to work with on my way out of Duna's atmosphere. Which, it's great to have more fuel, but my thrust-to-weight ratio, well, it's still fine, but it's a bit lower than I was hoping for or expecting at this point. And so I've, I've made the same mistake that I did on Ike, and then I'm burning towards the horizon a bit too much. On Ike, it was just an issue that I might run into a hill. On Duna, it's actually less efficient because I'm fighting the atmosphere more than I need to. And at this point, I should probably just have pulled up a little more and gone up and then started burning sideways to get myself into orbit. But I've actually got plenty of fuel, excess fuel. I've got plenty of thrust to weight ratio. This isn't really a difficult launch. I just, I didn't do it optimally. I do use the opportunity to grab some science while flying over Duna. So very good. But eventually I do make it into orbit, circularize, and then take a look at when my transfer window is. Bill is going to be orbiting Duna for 135 days before we can make the burn to start to go back to Kerbin. We're going to have launches to both ELO and DRACE before then, so I'm going to end the video here. Wait for our window in 135 days to return home. Okay, Bill, you'll be good, right? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.